Hey, welcome back guys to the part two of the ultimate Cloudflare R2 guide. In the last part, we looked at how to upload a file to Cloudflare R2. And we also took a look at the Cloudflare R2 dashboard, how to set up a Cloudflare R2 object storage, and then the migration tool and then uh, creating API keys. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll leave a link to that video in the in this video's description. In this part two, we are going to talk about pre-signed URLs. So how do you generate pre-signed URLs? Why do you generate pre-signed URLs? And in this video, we are going to create pre-signed URLs for the get and the put object commands on S3. So without any further ado, let's get started. So before we take a look at the code and see how to generate a pre-signed URL, let's first try to understand why do we even need pre-signed URLs, right? So let's assume you have this kind of system, right? You have a client, the Node.js server, which is basically our application and then Cloudflare R2. Right now, if you look at part one, what we did is that a client uploads a file to the Node.js server and then the Node.js server uploads the file to Cloudflare R2, right? Now, this is fine if you just have say two or three or four clients, right? Now, imagine if your application scales to say a million clients or two million clients, right? Now, what would happen is all of your clients will make a call to your Node.js server and then Node.js server will then upload it to Cloudflare R2, right? So this thing is will create a bottleneck. So in order to fix this bottleneck, one way of doing it is to allow the client to directly upload to Cloudflare R2, which can get a bit risky because if you give, if you embed the credentials the access key and the secret in the client application anyone with those credentials can actually upload directly to the bucket without you knowing right they can bypass the whole security mechanism so it's a huge security breach and we don't want that to happen so in order to fix this what what we can do is the client requests an upload to the node.js server the node.js server returns back with a url right uh, and tells the client to upload the file to the Cloudflare R2 bucket using that URL, right? So the URL is generated on the server and the URL expires after a certain period of time, right? It is all configured on the server. We can also configure a bunch of different things. We can say, you know, what is the size limit of the file that you can upload with the URL returned by Node.js, what bucket you need to upload it to, and a bunch of other things, right? If you want a detailed video on that, please let me know. So coming back to this, uh, the Node.js server will return back to the client a URL, and using that URL, the client will upload a file to Cloudflare R2. Now, what this allows is that this allows the client to upload to the bucket without the Node.js server getting involved. And also you don't share any permanent credentials with which they can actually upload a file to Cloudflare R2 without you knowing, right? So here they come to the Node.js server, the Node.js server returns a URL, the client takes that URL and uploads a file to Cloudflare R2. Right now, this we can do for other commands as well. So this is specifically what we are doing is for put command. We can also do this for the get command. So in this way, the Node.js server is out of the loop, but it is also informed on what the client is uploading and when the client is uploading. Right. And then the Node.js server can decide if, the, if it really wants to issue a pre-signed URL or not. So now, even if your clients actually scale to say a million clients, right? What your Node.js server is actually doing is it just returning back a URL. So it doesn't have to do that heavy lifting of actually uploading the file to a file storage somewhere and then in turn upload it to Cloudflare. What we are doing here is we are actually delegating the task of uploading to the Cloudflare R2 infra which is pretty robust and which is pretty distributed and and really good at handling a lot of requests now with the theory out of the way let's take a look at the code now the code is pretty simple uh, there are a few things that have changed uh, since the last time we'll 
since the last time we visited this code one thing that we did is we upgraded from the v2 version of aws sdk uh, to v3 version uh, so we are now using aws sdk client 3 and at the same time we are also using s3 request pre-signer which is which then gives us this function called get signed url right so uh, we have installed these two packages using npmi and here we have added two functions so there is a get upload url and there is a get load url so the get upload url as the name suggests uh, returns back a pre-signed url with which the client can upload a file and then the get load url returns a url with which the user can actually load a file right so you, you have more control over for how much time a user can load a particular file, which can be very helpful in certain scenarios. So now let's take a look at this get upload URL, right? So here we define a command, the put object command. We give it a bucket name that, hey, this is the bucket where I want to upload. I can also give it a file name, the content type. Uh, I'll just put it octate stream because uh, it can be of any type, right? It's not necessarily always a jpeg it can be a video uh, it can be a text it can be anything so a content type is application octet stream and then we just pass this command uh, to the get signed url function that is exported by s3 request pre-signer and the first argument that we pass is the s3 client that we have generated here uh, and one more thing that we pass here is an expires in so this is very important, right? So whatever we define here is in seconds. So here, what we are saying is whatever URL will return back expires after an hour. So you, so the client has only one hour to upload the file using this particular URL, using this pre-signed URL. If he tries to upload it after that, it won't be accepted by Cloudflare R2. Similarly, in the get load URL, we just replace this by get object command. And we do the pretty much the same thing. We have also defined two get routes. So there is an upload URL get route and there is a load URL to get route, which don't do anything different. Uh, they just return the upload URL and the load URL respectively. Now let's take a look at the demo. So here uh, we are calling the upload URL endpoint to which we are passing the file name. So what the client passes is just like a file name, right? Hey, this is the file that I'm going to upload. Right, just pass in the file name with an extension. And now if I click on the send now, so it returns back a URL, right? So I can take this URL actually, copy this, uh, no, I think I'll have to do a put request. So I'm gonna post, paste it in here and I'm just gonna upload the a random file, right? And then if I hit send, uh, yeah, so it returns a 200 okay, right? Now let's check the bucket that we created last time and check if the file has actually been uploaded with the name test, right? Because remember for generating, we passed in a file name, right? So that is test.jpg. As you can see inside of this bucket, I, I can see that test.jpg file. And as you can see, it has been modified right now, right? So this way we are now able to upload a file using a pre-signed URL. Now let's take a look at how do you get a file using a pre-signed URL. What I'm doing here is I'm passing in the same file name test.jpg, but I'm calling the load URL endpoint, right? Now let me hit this. And as you can see, it returned back me a URL. So let's go back to the browser and actually paste it the paste the file in here. And it actually downloaded the file, right? So test.jpg, right? Now if I click on I, You can see that the creation date was right now, right? So we just downloaded this file. So we are now able to load a object with a pre-signed URL. And we are also able to upload an object to the pre-signed URL. Now, there are a bunch of things that we can explore in the pre-signed URL space. So if you are interested, please let me know. And I'll go more in depth on a pre-signed URL. If you guys have any suggestions on what, what I should cover next, uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you find this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe and then like the video it helps me a ton and thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one